Hello, everyone, and welcome to day five of APH Virtual Excel Camp. Um, sorry for the late opening of the room. Um, we're having a little bit of a technical issue getting our captionists connected. So if you all want to get situated, um, we'll be starting just momentarily. Welcome everyone to day five of ABH's Virtual Excel Camp. We are so excited that you made it to the end of the week. Um, we are going to um, quickly make this uh, turn this over. I think we got everyone's chat switched over. If you haven't done so already, if you could switch your chat box to all panelists and attendees, that way everyone in the room can see what's going on and share in the excitement of our last day. Our topic for this week, just as a reminder, is Oreos and Abakai, which you all seem to be embracing very well. I would like to introduce for the last day of the week, our teachers for this week, Miss Amy and Miss Nina. Take it away, thank you. Hi friends, this is Miss Nina. Miss Amy here. Welcome to our final day. Awesome, we're gonna jump around our fun Oreo fact of the day. So I will put it up here. And this actually is gonna kind of give us an idea of what we're doing later. Our fun Oreo fact of the day is an Oreo dipping tool called the dipper. It's spelled a little funny. It's spelled D-I-P-R, the dipper. And it's a tool you can actually buy at the store. It has a plastic colorful handle you can hold on to, And then it has a hook on the tip, the plastic hook. And your Oreo can rest right on that hook so you can dip it in milk and it won't fall off. You don't have to hold it in your hands and you won't lose it in the bottom of your cup. So there's actually a tool for dipping your Oreos out there available at the stores. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. All right, friends. Oops. Let me go here. We're going to do a super quick, oh my goodness, here we go, a super quick chat box check. We, we were talking before we started, but if everyone could very quickly tell us what is something that you like doing on your summer vacation. Maybe you've already done it. Maybe you're still going to do it. You like to go swimming. You can put an S. You like to just relax all summer. At home, you can put an R. Play with friends, you can put an S, go to camp, you can put a C or just something different. You guys can put as many letters as you want. I think I'm gonna, I'd put all of them. I like doing all those things. <laughs> Relaxing, oh yeah, that's what my son would say. <laughs> Water activities, awesome. Something different and relaxing. I see a swimming. Summer vacation is a great time to do all different things, all the things you want to do. Awesome, guys. All right. Oh, I see someone has playing with friends, swimming, going to camp. <laughs> We're happy to be at camp with you guys, too. All right, friends, we are going to jump right into our abacus time with Miss Amy and right into our chant. All right. Let's get ready for our last advocacy lesson of the week by starting off with our chant. Here we go. A, B, A, C, U, S. I'm gonna rock my abacus. A, B, A, C, U, S. I'm gonna rock my abacus. A, B, A, C, U, S. I'm gonna count on my abacus. A, B, A, C, U, S. I'm gonna count on my abacus. A, B, A, C, U, S. I'm gonna learn my abacus. A, B, A, C, U, S. I'm gonna learn my abacus. Yay. And I think so far we have learned a lot on our abacus today. Yes. So yes. that's great. That's our great. Best week. Not just today. Today we're going <laughs> to learn more. <laughs> so today's objectives for abacus learning are that we will be able to count to 20 on our abacus independently mm -hmm. and that we will count from 20 to 100 on our abacus by tens. And then we'll be able to set and read numbers between one and 100. 
You guys have wow. added a lot on this week, going from counting to what, five, six in our first day to 100 today. It's a lot. All right. right. Be proud. Yep. Pat I'm going to my share so we can focus on the abacus cam. All right. I got to scooch over and a little closer. There I'm going to go. grab my abacus. Hopefully everyone at home is grabbing their abacus as well. All right. The first thing we will do today is we're going to review counting to 20. We did that yesterday. So if you haven't learned that yet and you need to catch up, you can look at days prior to today for the recordings and you'll get there eventually. But to move on, we're just going to go straight through counting from one to 20, starting in our ones column and eventually shifting to our tens column. Um, when we get to certain movements. I'm going to say when we go from our five bead and we clear our four ones underneath that as we're counting up, I'm just gonna go, uh, what did I say I was gonna go? Slide, <laughs> I had to think about it for a minute. And then when we have a full nines column and we're gonna exchange our nine for one more and have to go into our next column over, We've been using a pincer grasp where we take our thumb and pointer finger and we push our five bead and our one beads away from our separation bar. I'm gonna go squish. When you hear that, that's what that movement means. So we're just adding a little sound to it just to help trigger some who might need a little help remembering to do those movements as we go. Everybody ready? You'll catch on when we go. Here we go. Let's start at one and we're counting to 20. One, two, three, four, five, slide, six, seven, eight, nine. Here we go. Squish, 10. Back to our ones column. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, slide, 16, 17, 18, 19, squish, 20, oh, sorry. <laughs> Having a hard time seeing where my finger is and feeling. So now we have 20 set on our abacus. Hopefully those sound effects helped you to remember to do the little movements that we need to, to go to the next numbers from the five and when we're going from one column to the next. If not, you can just ignore them and do what you were doing. All right, now I'm gonna have, I have 20 on my abacus, right? I should have two one beads set in my tens column touching my separation bar. I wanna think really quickly. How do you think that I would increase my number on my abacus from 20 to 30? Think about it. If you thought adding a third bead, one bead, in your tens column to make three one beads in your ten column, tens column, you are absolutely correct. To show 30 on my abacus, I'm going to have one, two, three one beads pushed against the separation bar in my tens column. That makes three, one, two, three tens. One ten is the same as 10. Two tens is what? Think about it. We're counting by tens. So two tens would make 20 and three tens make 30. Good job. 30. So three tens makes 30. Let's go ahead and clear the three from our tens column and we have nothing in our ones column because three in our tens column and nothing in the ones column is three and zero together, 30. 
All right, we're gonna make a challenge now. Challenge is, we've already figured out how to count to 20. We are going to count to 30 on our abacus. How many times do you think you will have to clear nine beads in your ones column to add one bead in your tens column when we're counting to 30? When we count to 20, we do it two times. Think about it. Let's find out the answer together by counting. Oh, I see, I see a correct answer in my chat. So people are thinking. All right, let's see if we are correct. Starting with one, counting to 30. Here we go. One. Two, three, four, five, slide, six, seven, eight, nine, squish, ten, back to my ones, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 16 slide, 16, 17, 18, 19, squish, 20, slide back to my ones. Now I have two set in my tens and I'm putting 21 by adding one to my ones column, 22. 23, 24, 25, slide, 26, 27, 28, 29, nine, I have nine, so I've got to squish, 30. I just added my third bead, my third one, into my tens column and I have zero again in my ones column, making the number 30. So we had to squish or take, not, take nine out of our ones column and add one to our tens column three times to get 30. What do you think? How many times do you think we would have to do it to get to 50? You can type it in the chat, your guess. We had to push three times to get to 30. How many times to 50? Yep, and I believe when we did 20, we had to squish two times hmm. for 30. Oh, I see a guess. Someone said five, okay. I wonder if anyone else wants to type a guess into the chat. Well, if you were thinking five and some of us have typed in five, you are correct, five times. So as you're counting up, you're just gonna keep going, adding your 10 bead after removing nine from your ones column and back and forth as you're adding on in your tens column. So right now I'm gonna clear my abacus. I had 30 set and what would it look like for me to set a 50, a five, zero, 50. Think about that based on what we know now. If you thought bringing a five bead down in your tens column to the separation bar was the correct answer, you are correct. When I write a 50, five, zero, I have five set in my tens column and zero set in my ones column. What about 60? We add our six. 70, we add our seven bead in our tens column. How about 80? Now I have eight beads set in my tens column. 
what about 90? Nine beads set in our tens column. So let's clear our tens column. And I know some of you probably have not started counting to tens yet. So you could just follow along with us. Maybe you'll learn something new, or maybe by the time you get there, it will sound familiar to you. But we're gonna count by tens by adding one beads in our tens column. Because again, if I add one bead in my tens column, one ten equals, or one, one bead in my tens column equals 10. Two equals 20. Not like in my ones column, where if I add a one bead in my ones column, that equals one. It's a little bit challenging concept. So let's in our tens column, get our finger on our first one bead and let's count by tens until we get to 90. It's gonna look a lot like counting to nine in our ones column, except we're in our tens column. So here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40. I should have four one beads touching my separation bar in my tens column to show 40. Now I'm gonna go 50, slide, 60, 70, 80, 90. I should have all nine beads in my tens column touching my separation bar. Does everybody have nine beads in their tens column to make 90? And if you think about it this way, you have nine in your tens column and zero still in your ones column. So your nine digit is your, your tens column and your zero digit is your ones column. So 90. Let's do, no, let's not do that one more time, sorry. Let's think about how we might with 90 set move from 90 to 100. And a hint is that it's gonna be very similar from moving from your ones column to your tens column. If you thought that we were going to squish and remove everything from our nines column, come over to the third column from your right and put a one bead, you are absolutely correct. Your ones column, right next to that is your tens column to the left. And if we go one more column over to the left, you are now in your hundreds column. So if wow. I said a one bead in my hundreds column, I now have 100. One, zero, zero. So the one stands for the one in the hundreds place. The zero stands for the zero in my tens place now and zero in my ones column, 100. That's a big number. It would take us a few minutes to go from one to 100 if we were counting. So we are not gonna do that today. Okay. Now. I think that we are going to try and set some numbers. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and at home, I'm not going to set it on mine first. I'm going to give you a chance to set yours and then I'll show you. So could everybody set an eight on your abacus? Eight. Eight. If you set in your ones column, your five bead and three ones bead against your separation bar, then you are correct. That is eight. You can put a Y in the chat if you had, if you got that or an N if you would need to practice that again at home later. We can get an idea of who's got that, okay? I see a yes, some yeses coming in. 
All right, Good. everyone's got that eight. Awesome. All right, clear your eight. We will do two more. Now, I would like to set a 56. Whoa. Five, six, that's a big jump. I no longer have one digit, I have two digits. So that is a hint that I'm gonna use two columns to set the number 56, five, six. Okay, hopefully you've set. I remember when we were counting and when we were in our tens column that I need to put a five in my tens column to make 50. And then in the number 56, the six is in the ones place. So I have to set another five and a one bead to make six in my ones column. So I have a five or a five bead and a one bead touching my separation bar in my ones column and a five bead set in my tens column. If you got 56, put Y in the chat. If you need to practice again at home, that's totally fine. You can put an N in the chat just so we know. See another, some more yeses popping up. Great. Awesome, Miss Amy. They're probably ready for the, the uh -huh. big challenge at the end then. That's okay. If that one was hard, that's okay. You can try it again at home. Yep. Peter. All right, I'm clearing my 56. My last number was the last thing we learned. Can everybody set 100 on your abacus? The number 100. Mm. That's our big challenge. <laughs> All right. Yeah, ready I'm, for saying yes. <laughs> yep, getting a yes. I'm going to go over to my hundreds column. So from my right, I'm going to put my finger on my ones. Then I move over to the left one to my tens. Then I move over to the left one more time to my hundreds column. And I'm going to put a one bead there. Zero in my tens, zero in my ones. And that makes 100. Wow. <laughs> A very high number. Yep, I see some yeses coming up. Some friends got that. Maybe our older friends. <laughs> awesome. All right. Okay, Miss Nina, I think we're out of time for abacus time. All right. Then so I will reshare my screen and we will take a look at what our go. Jump through these. Hold on to our STEM time. Do what our investigation is going to be like today. Today's investigation is called the perfect dunk. We will be making predictions and observations about what happens to our cookies over time when we put them in a liquid. And we'll be using milk or water if you're not able to have milk. All right, so here's our materials list. You guys can take a moment to gather your things. I would put my milk or my water if you're not able to have milk in maybe a, a bowl or a wider cup. Cookies we're gonna be dipping. If, if I choose a tiny cup, I probably won't be able to get my fingers in there. We'll also need a plate because we're gonna be feeling our cookies as well as tasting them. And we need a place to put those cookies. And then we need about three cookies broken in half. If there's a grown up who can cut the cookie in half for you, they can do that now, or you can just use your hands and snap that cookie right in half. I would do that away from my computer. I don't want crumbs in my keyboard. So I would maybe put them on my plate away from my computer and crack my three cookies in half. I'll end up with six pieces of my cookie. Why don't you guys take a moment to grab your things. And once you've gotten them, you can come back and give us a thumbs up or a yes. If you're ready to go. I wonder if anyone's had an Oreo dunked in milk before. Or if this might be the first time you're trying that for some friends. Oh, hey, smiley face. All right, friend is ready. Got your, your milk or your water, got your plate. 
got your cookies. I also always, when I'm doing an investigation, I grab a piece of paper or something to help me put my thoughts down so I can remember what I've done and what my observations were. Okay, another friend saying yes. I'm gonna leave this up for just another few moments. And Miss Amy has an Oreo camera, <laughs> so we can also follow along as Miss Amy does this at home. So I'll be switching back and forth between my shared screen and Miss Amy's Oreo close-up cam. Waiting for a couple more friends to say they've gotten it. And breaking up your cookies can take a little bit of time and they don't have to be perfectly in half. And the only reason we're breaking them up into pieces is because we're gonna be tasting these cookies and I thought if we got five cookies and dunked them and ate them all, we'll all have a stomach ache at the end. But if we break them in half, we won't end up eating as many cookies. Okay. All right, friends, so I see another yes pop up. So the first thing that we're gonna do before we start our investigation and dipping our Oreos is we are just going to start off by making some observations. What does your Oreo feel like before you even dunk it? What does the regular Oreo feel like? We've been investigating and doing things with them all week, but we maybe haven't taken time to really Feel what the surface feels like, feel what the cream feels like, smell it. I'm gonna be using all different senses. And you guys can type in the chat some describing words that I can put onto our observation paper together. I'm gonna to have to exit out of my full screen so that I can type your thoughts. I put some ideas of words you might use to describe your Oreo, like hard or soft, rough or smooth. Is it crunchy, if, you, if you're allowed to taste your Oreo at home, if your parent has said that's okay for you to eat them, you could take a little nibble of this one. I see someone said hard, it's textured. Another friend said hard. So let me get my um, text box in there. We've got hard, it is a textured surface. It's not smooth, right? They've put a design into those Oreos. So every cookie has that texture. Make my font a bit bigger. Great. Any other observations that I missed? Any lots of friends are saying it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. And I, if, you, if you take a nibble, it's probably crunchy. <laughs> All right. Miss Amy, did I get what everyone said in the chat? Are those our main things? That is what I see. I see hard, textured. Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, we're going to think for a moment and make a prediction what will happen to our hard textured Oreo when we dunk it in milk? Will there be any changes? And why? You can think about that. We're gonna watch a short video that shows me setting up the experiment and getting ready so that you guys can see what we're, you're about to do at home. Here we go. The sound isn't on it. Oh, hold on. Let me stop my share. I just was told there's no sound. So I got to figure out what I did. All right, I'm gonna exit out of this off to restart it with my sound. Let me do share screen again. Oops, I had forgotten to check the with sound button. All right, Miss Amy, I'll have, you have to give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear this for sure. Okay, everyone, I'm super excited today for our per perfect dunk investigation. Yeah. I've got my cookies ready. I've got a bowl of milk so I can fit my hand in. And I've got a little plate to put my cookie on when I'm doing my observations. I've also got a piece of paper so I can record my observations. Because we're gonna be dunking and eating our cookies, we don't need to use a whole cookie. So if you've got a parent to cut it in half, they can do that for you. And if not, you can take your cookie and snap it in half. Awesome. Okay, when we dunk our cookies, 
we're gonna hold one end with our fingers and we're gonna dunk just half of our cookie. So our fingers can touch the water, but we don't have to stick our whole hand or anything in our, our milk, sorry, not water. All right, so I'm gonna dunk my cookie and I'm gonna hold it while we count. One, two, three. I'm gonna take my cookie out and put it on my plate so I can make some observations about how it feels. Mm, it's wet, but it's still hard and firm. Mm, and the best part, I'm gonna take a taste. Hmm. I'm gonna write down my observations. It felt hard, but it was mushy when I took a bite. Hmm, I'm gonna write down how I felt about it. I liked it. All right, guys, we're gonna try it with all different times and see if we can figure out how long we need to dunk that Oreo for it to be your favorite, most perfect dunk. Let's have fun. All right. Exit out of that. I'm going to stop my share for just one moment so I can exit from that video. So I don't know how you guys like your Oreos. If you like them to be crunchy and crisp or if you like them to be more mushy. But we're going to try some different times. We're going to dunk our Oreos together for different amounts of time. And we're going to make observations and a taste test after each time. <laughs> yeah. All right. So actually, is there is it possible that we just spotlight Miss Amy's close-up cam? So when I stop my screen share, it's just the close-up cam. You don't need to see me if that's possible. If not, you'll see me with the Oreo. <laughs> All right, so hopefully everyone's got their Oreo, one half of their Oreo in their hand and ready to dunk it. So oh, there we go, thank you. To get that one half of your Oreo in your hand. And I actually am gonna just screen share for one more moment to show you guys that the first length of time that we're going to do is actually just one second. So we're all gonna say, go, we're gonna dunk it. One, take it out and put it right on your plate. So it's a really quick dunk. All right, so I'm gonna stop my share so we can watch Miss Amy and go along with her Oreo in your hand and dunk it in, go. One, Mississippi, take it out, put it on your plate. And go ahead and use your fingers and feel your Oreo. What does it feel like now? Are there any changes? You can feel it. You can type in your observations into the chat so that I can put it into our group or observation sheet. Well, Miss Amy's touching it with her fingertips. Hmm, go ahead and type some describing words into the chat for me, friends. The part that you dipped into your water or milk, what does it feel like now? And if you're allowed to taste your Oreo at home, go ahead and take a nibble of that part that you dunked in. It feels solid. The cookie part's a little mushy. Someone else said it's a little soft and so hard, yeah. Felt a little more mushy after just one second. It's already absorbing that liquid. All right, so I will share this again. I do have to, I have to get myself out of this view mode. Here we go. So that I can type our observations onto our sheet. I said it's more mushy, someone else said it feels a little solid, someone else said soft and hard. Mm -hmm. It tasted a little bit less crunchy. Maybe it wasn't as crisp and crunchy. Maybe you didn't hear it crunch when you bit into it. Awesome observations. On the last part, I just like to write down my thoughts so you guys could just think about it in your head. Did you like that better than the plain Oreo or did you not like it because it was wet? I am going to put a smiley face. I always like cookies. I like them whether they're dunked in milk or not. So I liked it, but maybe not my favorite. All right, now we're gonna stop our share here so we can go back to Miss Amy's cam. And the next length of time is going to be three seconds. And we'll just count it 
together, Miss Amy. Are you ready, guys? Get your next a new piece of Oreo. <laughs> a new piece of Oreo, we're starting fresh. And we're gonna dunk half of it, and we're gonna count to three. Ready, set, dunk. One, two, three. Take it out. Put it on your plate and start using your fingers and your mouth, everything else for some observations. Type those observations into the chat, please, so that I can write them into our group worksheet. Ms. Amy's using her fingers. Okay, it's someone else's is a little mushy, but it's still pretty hard. Mm-hmm. What about when you bite into it? All right, I will share my screen so I can type that in. I will I'm using my fingertips to feel after I felt my cookie, what my fingers feel like. And I oh. will say it's sticky, slimy. See if you can oh. feel that. I wasn't feeling that as much with my first one, but this one for sure. Someone else said it tasted very um, soft and mushy. I think that's what happened in my example video. I, I felt it on the outside and it, I thought, oh, this is still hard. But when I took a bite, it mushed and mushed in my mouth. Hmm. The mushier it is, the more I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do like a, a double like for me. That's my personal opinion. I don't know about you guys. Oh, I see some of me. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. All right, we have more. So we're gonna keep dunking it longer and longer. Let's stop for one moment and think, what's gonna happen to our cookie as we dunk it for longer periods of time? Hmm, what's gonna happen to our cookies? I think this might be why someone invented the dipper tool. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they didn't like that sticky gooey. Mm -hmm. I think so. M, okay. maybe M for mushy. In yeah. Chat. Oh yes. So oh, it might. Sorry. Someone's thinking it, they might start to fall apart. I wonder at what at what time they're going to really fall apart. I don't know. Well, we're going to find out. We're going to try seven seconds. So I'll stop my share. You guys are going to get a new fresh half of your cookie. We got to start from fresh each time. Okay, with a new piece of cookie. And we're going to dunk it for seven seconds. We're just going to count it. So we're kind of estimating our seven seconds here. All right, hold it in your hand and dunk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take it out, put it on your plate, and let's really feel it with those fingertips. What is happening? Type in the chat some more descriptions for me so I can put them into our worksheet. Mushy and falling apart already at seven seconds. Oh my goodness. What does it taste like? Do you like the way it tastes or feels when you bite into it? <laughs> oh, I see a little emoji with hearts. Someone said it's floppy. Yeah, what a way to describe it. If you're trying to hold it, I bet it's like whoop, flopping over on one side. I will share my screen so I can start typing in those observations. Let me get my text box and we're gonna say it's floppy. I like that description. Mushy and falling apart. I'm putting an exclamation mark on that one. I'll make my font bigger. Here we go. Maybe just a little bit smaller so I can fit more thoughts in there. Okay, I don't know how you guys feel about that. Miss Amy, I'll put your opinion in here. Do you, how do you feel about that? Um, well, I as far as how I like it, I mm -hmm. feel like it a little mushy. I'm okay <laughs> with it. Yeah, I'm okay with it. So would you like with the heart eyes or just the smiling face? I think that probably heart eyes on this one. Okay, Miss Amy's loving it. <laughs> Love it. All it's right. Still not too mushy. So, okay. all right. Well, we're about to double our time here, plus a little bit. We're going to do 50, 
15 seconds. So I'll stop my share. Everyone, please get your next piece of cookie ready. Nice, fresh piece of hard, crunchy cookie. And we're going to dip it for 15 seconds. Ready and dunk it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and investigate. Tell me your observations. On this one, I turned it a different direction so we can hmm. see. It's Amy, if you push it, is it like pushing beneath? Oh, it yes. is pushing beneath your fingers. I see some of that milk like oozing out of it, Miss Amy. Yes, it is definitely turning super mushy. Someone's had a big word there. It's disintegrating, dissolving, and disintegrating. It's really squishy. Good yeah, word. Is super squishy. Look at that. Good vocab word. Put your finger whoop, right through it, I bet. All right. I will start typing some of those observations. If you've got some more observations, go ahead and share them with me. Your observation could even be like, it's squishy in my mouth, or it's yummy, or. And you know what else I'm noticing, Miss Nina, is my napkin that's underneath my cookies. Excuse me. <laughs> I might be allergic to Oreos. Oh, I no. <laughs> no, I, that would be terrible. I'm noticing that my napkin is picking up some of the moisture from my cookie, too. Oh. Is your napkin kind of disintegrating beneath you? <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to have to put myself on mute for a minute. Mm. All right. I don't, Miss Amy, is it too squishy for your liking, or do you still this love one's it? This getting a little borderline for me. I don't know. Uh -huh. I might give it a little bit of like a ooh face. Yeah, <laughs> I think maybe it might be there. I think it might be hard to eat when it gets that squishy. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Is it getting harder to eat? Is it like falling, falling away from your hand before you can get it into your mouth? Texture's a thing. You know? Oh, the someone said, Jamie said, love, love it. it. Thumbs yeah. up. Okay. Yum. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to do one more. So hopefully you still have one more piece of your cookie, a fresh piece of cookie ready to go. And we're going to do 30 seconds. I'm going to put, it, put the timer on my phone a little bit to help me um, keep track of my seconds here. There's okay. my cookie. This is the last Chris. one we're going to do. Get your last piece of cookie ready and ready. Set, jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and take it out if it hasn't fallen apart in there. Yay, try and put it on your plate, touch it. Let's see what happens. Tell me your observations in the chat. Miss Amy, I am looking forward to seeing what happens to your cookie. Oh, it's oh. so wet, Miss Nina. It's got milk just seeping out of the cookie part. I can push down on it and I see milk kind of coming out of the cookie. Oh my goodness. Oh, Tiana said it is totally falling apart. Yes, I agree. And you know, the part that I was holding up at the top gives me a good comparison. I can compare a little bit it may have pulled up some of the moisture in that part. So it might be softer than an actual cookie that hasn't been in the milk, but to feel the difference between the top of my cookie where it wasn't in the milk and where I was holding it with my fingers versus the bottom is a big difference. Mm -hmm. But oh, also yeah. on this one, as I'm moving my thumb oh my along God. it, the pieces are coming up off of the cookie and I can swipe 
off of the top part, but that middle is still so firm and has kept its shape. The cream That's filling. I think Angeline had a similar observation to you. She said the top of the cookie fell apart and I can feel the cream now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will put some of that in our observation sheet. So. So I guess if you're a person who really just wants the cream, this could be <laughs> one way to get to that cream without twisting the top of the cookie off. Just soak it off. Soak the cookie off of it. It's falling apart. Top of the cookie fell apart. Ooh, I, I think I can feel the cream. All right. And I see... Jamie is giving it like a double thumbs up and heart eyes. And I think Ooh. the more sure the better for Jamie. And actually, yeah. Jamie, that's how I feel too when I eat Oreos. <laughs> 30, 30 seconds is my perfect dunk. That for me, that is. <laughs> but I'll put one of these faces for Miss Amy because I know that mushiness is less, too much. All right. So 30 seconds is my perfect dunk. That is what I like the most. It looks like, Miss Amy, your perfect dunk might have been around seven seconds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. What about you guys? What was your perfect dunk? Was it one second? Three seconds? Seven seconds? 15 seconds? Or 30 seconds? Go ahead and type it into the chat. Deanna feels like Miss Amy. Seven seconds is the perfect dunk. Awesome. Other people's ideas of their perfect dunk. Another seven seconds. I have something interesting to tell you guys after I see some more of these uh, chat responses. One second, I don't like it mushy, says Annalise, okay. Yep, if you don't like it mushy, then yeah, any, anything you start getting past that three seconds, you're starting to get some mush on there, so. I see one saying seven or 30, it doesn't okay. matter, they love it anyway. <laughs> They'll take it. I love that. That's that's flexibility. Mm -hmm. When you're flexible, you're okay with whatever level of mushy it is. It can be hard. <laughs> it's fine. It could be super mushy. It's fine. Ten seconds. <laughs> Any image just dunk the cookie, right, Jamie? I agree. <laughs> All right, you guys are doing a great job. So the interesting thing I wanted to tell you, and I'll stop my share. Is before we did this experiment, I, I looked it up. I Googled the perfect Oreo dunk to see what, if there was already answers to this question. And there have been studies done on it and between four and eight seconds tends to be the most popular. When people are surveyed and they do a similar experience, most people say between four and eight seconds is their perfect dunk. <laughs> so if you said seven, you fall right into that. <laughs> awesome. You guys have done a great job. We are we are all done with our Oreos for today. If you have an Oreo mushy mess in front of you, now's a good time to maybe set it aside, shove it aside. You can help your parents clean it up later. But we have just a few minutes left together. And Miss Amy and I had a quick sound game with our abacus again that we wanted to play with before we say our goodbyes. Okay, so I am going to share my screen. Everyone's going to push their Oreo mess away, get their abacus back out, and we are going to be listening to sounds just like we did on day two or three. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure my sound is shared. All right, give us a thumbs up to let us know that your Oreos are away and your abacus is out. And I'm going to play these sounds. It's going to be animal sounds mixed in with a like doo -doo 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 sound. And we're listening for our magic, our magic sound. Okay. <laughs> Let me put a reminder out there. Make sure your abacus is clear. Anytime we're going to work with it, we want to clear it so that we don't get the wrong number because we already had something set. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. See a thumbs up. We've got someone who's ready. Miss Amy is not going to count along with the sounds, but I will set the abacus with the correct number at the end. Okay, because we want you guys to be listening 
and using your abacus to count every time you hear that sound. And at the end, you'll type how many you heard into the chat. It's gonna take about two minutes to play. Ready, go. Next. 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 Next one. Next one. <laughs> Next one. Next. Next. short on time so I'm gonna stop there all right type into the chat how many times you heard that sound okay and Miss Amy is going to she was keeping track <laughs> Miss Amy is going to let you know if you're correct okay I see two correct answers so okay. far three I correct guess. answers four correct answers see if I get any more if I don't get any wow, more than a minute or two, I will set it on my abacus to show everybody what they should have counted up to. Mm -hmm. That's a really fun game to play at home, maybe with a sibling or a friend or a parent. All but right, I've seen all correct answers in my chat. So if you have on your abacus a nine, you are correct. So I have a five bead and four one beads in my ones column touching my separation bar nine Ooh. nine times miss nina played that sound awesome job guys we are at the end of our time so we already have to say our goodbyes but you guys have been so much fun to have camp with and we hope you all have a, a great rest of your summer however long of your summer vacation you have left <laughs> Awesome. I am going to stop the recording.